I'll take a few minutes to update you on uh, what's happening today. Uh, first of all, a bit of a conditions update. Um, we've taken a look at the data from this morning and seen a lot of flattening out of uh, some of the conditions to the north of us. Lakes aren't rising as much and um, the river gauges aren't reporting any increase in flow. Uh, that said, there's been no decrease and obviously we've got a developing situation with the amount of water that's coming down right now. Uh, again, the projections were for 25 to 40 uh, mills uh, with up to 50 in some spots. I think what is important to remember, and it's been a long drenching rain here this morning, um, but I've been getting reports that it's raining even harder to the north of us than in other parts. If it's raining at any point north of us in the watershed, eventually that water comes to us. So people should expect that water levels will rise. We do not have a calculation for how much, and obviously this is going to sustain the event for some period of time longer. Uh, areas that are already flooded obviously are well aware of the damage that this can do. We know that there are a lot of other people within the community trying to fortify their properties right now and using the sandbags that we've made available to them uh, and a number of um, individuals, neighbors, private businesses uh, helping as well as uh, some community uh, volunteer groups. So we're thankful for that. But the long and short of it is we don't expect the conditions to get better for some time. This is to, supposed to be an all day rain event and obviously weather estimates are just that. So we'll hope for the best, but are expecting a pretty tough day uh, and some tough days yet to come. So to that end, we're obviously um, encouraging everybody to do the right thing for themselves and keep themselves safe. And it bears repeating every day. And every day that I'm out here, I'm going to repeat that message. If you or someone you know has been displaced or affected by flooding, if you have friends, family, or relatives that you are concerned about that are still in place in flooded areas, if they require assistance, please call 211. 211 is our centralized number for assistance for people during this event. If you require assistance to evacuate your home, also call 211 and we'll make sure resources are dispatched to help you out. That said, if it is an emergency situation, 911 is the number we want you to call. Remember there are a number of roads that are closed and have kind of cut people off uh, in this situation. It causes delayed response times for first responders, so it's not really a great idea to be on the other side of that closed road. And I would encourage you that if you are, you should think about leaving and going somewhere else. Again, if you need help, call 211. A little bit of good news. We talked a lot about Beaumont Farm and the Elport Bay area yesterday. And the District of Muskoka through yesterday and continuing today is repairing Beaumont Drive by adding uh, significant amounts of large gauge aggregate to the roadway to try and raise it up enough to allow people to get in and out. Uh, it would be a slow way in and out. It may yet be covered by water, but the roadway, when it's completed, will be delineated so everybody knows where the road ends and the river begins. And hopefully, water doesn't get so deep that we have to close it again. So the road isn't open to the public yet, but we are hoping that it will be shortly. And I want to thank district officials, town officials, Fowler Construction and a number of local trucking companies that immediately sprung to action yesterday to make sure that that material got in place and they worked um, well into the evening and we're back at it again early this morning. Uh, that said, as I mentioned, we have a number of uh, closed roads within the community. Maybe I'll just talk a little bit more about that um, in a moment. I apologize. I want to talk about water for a second. I mentioned it yesterday, I'll mention it again today. If uh, there's any chance that your well has been compromised, you should find an alternative water source. Uh, those in flooded areas should assume that their water is not potable. And we have water filling stations at 336 Ecclestone Drive. That's the one that's most easily accessible and close to our urban area. And for those further out in the Beaumont and Allport area, the Kirby's Beach Water Treatment Plant at 1601 Beaumont Drive has drinking water available. 
We've had discussions with district um, public works staff today that maintain the uh, water and sewer functions in our community and they assure us that everything is operating normally and even though the plant is located near the lake that it should continue to operate normally and that it is not under any sort of threat. For anyone looking for more information with regard to drinking water, drinking water safety or any other public health uh, safety kind of tips that are applicable at this time, please make sure you visit www.simcoemuskokahealth.org and links are also available on our website and part of every release that we send out. Uh, as mentioned, there's a lot of work going on today with regard to sandbagging of properties and they are available free of charge provided by the town of Bracebridge and prepared by Fowler Construction at 1206 Rose Warren Drive for Bracebridge properties who have been affected by flooding. There was a little bit of confusion yesterday with regard to hours that these sandbags were available. They are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Supplies may wane a little bit over the evening as crews take a bit of a break, but the next day they'll get going again. I think it's my understanding that there's been 2,000, 3,000 bags prepared for today, and the uptake over the last few days has been around 6,000 bags. Mostly people coming to get their own, but Hydro One has been uh, generous in offering to deliver bags to people that require it, and we thank them for it. And there have been other people that have been feeding the people that are filling those bags and helping out, and I want to thank them too. Because of some updated road closures, and you'll note that yesterday on the south branch of the river, um, a district road was closed in the Fraserburg area, as well as some local roads that are closed. We would ask anyone on the other side of the south branch of the Muskoka River, the far side that's been closed off, to give 211 a call today and let us know where you are, if you need anything, if you're prepared to spend the next 72 hours um, isolated, and that you have adequate supplies. We want to know where you are um, and what you need because it makes it easier for us to respond. Again, if you want to leave, if you find that situation untenable, call 211. We'll have someone come and get you. Our 211 system is, has worked very well in this, enabling us to track people in terms of uh, their current location, uh, whether that's in an area that's currently um, in a sealed off due to a closure or a flood, or even for those that have come out and we know that they're out and we know they're okay. So we want to keep track of everybody as best we can. Uh, the weekend is coming and for people that have been hearing news reports about the conditions up here, I'm sure it's incur um, enticing them to want to check on their seasonal properties. I would encourage you not to. We have so many closed roads in so many locations. Many of them serve seasonal property areas that we don't want anybody getting themselves into an unexpected situation. As I mentioned, closed roads are closed roads. There may have been someone that drove through a closed road area yesterday. We've got more water today. We're going to have more water tomorrow. Just because you made it through once doesn't mean that you will make it through again. Doesn't mean that conditions will not have changed under the water that you can't see. So again, our primary goal is to keep you safe. Please don't drive through closed roads. Please, if you have a seasonal residence, check, at very least, check our road closures page. And if it is, is on a road that is not accessible, don't try and be a hero. Public Works is continuing to monitor road conditions and uh, for the most up-to-date road conditions, as mentioned, we have that closure page. It's accessible through the Town of Bracebridge website at bracebridge.ca. And that really wraps it up for now. Um, we're in a little bit of a wait and see period with the water coming down. Um, again, as I said off the top, uh, hoping for the best, not sure what to expect but preparing for a number of outcomes. The one outcome we do know for certain is that this is going to last for a while. 